Today's reading scripture is Philippians 4, 8-9. Philippians 4, 8-9. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, wherever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things, the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. After Golden Light Choir's praise, we will watch Senior Pastor's video sermon God, Deficiencies of Body, The first session, brothers and sisters in Christ, church members at Brian churches and local sanctuaries, and all members of the world, GCN viewers, God wants His children to become perfect as He is perfect. Also, he wants them to adorn themselves as brides of the Christ without having any blemish, just like the brides of the world who adorn themselves beautifully to meet their groom. Philippians 4a says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Wherever is lovely, wherever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. In order to become perfect brides of the Lord, we have to be beautiful in all our deeds and words. We should be worthy to be praised by others. But sometimes, even those who lead a seemingly faithful Christian life, some bless blemishes in their attitude of heart or in their words and actions. Some of them do not have the manners of the Lord due to a lack of knowledge or experience. In other words, there are the deficiencies of the body, that I explained in the lecture series, Spirit, Soul, and Body. If this deficiency is serious, they might lack the ability to understand the Word of God that they hear. Even if they mentally understand, they might lack the strength to put it into practice. They might try to go into spirit, but the spiritual growth is slow. In many cases, it is because of the deficiencies of the body. I explained that one of the main reasons why you can't go into spirit is the deficiencies of the body. Three main reasons, self-deception, deficiencies of body, arrogance. Even those men of spirit cannot go into spirit, the whole spirit, quickly enough Because of the remaining deficiencies of the body, if one has become a man of whole spirit, it means he is a truly beautiful, holy, and sanctified person who resembles God. For this reason, we need to learn about deficiencies of the body. We then have to remove and throw away deficiencies of the body found in ourselves. Now, how are the deficiencies of body formed and how are they shown outwardly? Also, how can you overcome deficiencies of the body and quickly go into spirit and whole spirit? Through the messages priest beginning today, I hope you will check yourself and change quickly. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will be blam blameless and perfect as brides of the Lord and the children of God so that you will give out the lights. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in order to understand the deficiencies of the body, let us first learn the definition of the terms. While listening to this message, I'd like to urge you to find out what deficiencies of the body you have, and then you have to throw them away and correct yourselves. By doing so, you can come in spirit and whole spirit. Deficiencies of the body refer to the state where you lack the basic 
ability because you have not gone through the processes that you should have gone through in your process of growth. This might sound difficult, and let me elaborate on this. After a person is born, he goes through many steps in growth until he becomes a grown adult. He goes through infancy, childhood, adolescence, and there are general things that he has to learn in each step. If he does not go through one of the processes normally, he might lack the ability to think or act properly. His emotions might become very different from other people. For example, when many other people are moved and shed tears, he doesn't feel anything, and he can't shed any tears. It's only natural for ordinary people to shed tears. People shed tears when they are touched, when they are in sorrow, torment, or distress. It is also natural for people to shed tears when they are joyful or happy. Unlike others, however, he doesn't have tears because his heart is not moved. Also, if you are to repent, you can do it only when our heart is moved. But without our heart being moved, we are not able to repent. It's because we have built a wall of sin by committing many sins and our heart is filled with many sins. Our heart can't be touched when there is no goodness in heart. When your heart is not touched at all, you don't have tears. For some, tears just flow down their face only when hearing or seeing something touching. But there are also people who hardly shed tears. Such a person might do something for which others feel ashamed and guilty, but he does not feel anything. Even when he should feel too ashamed to lift up his head toward heaven, he can boldly look up to heaven. Or even when he is in a position where he should feel ashamed and hide from people, he acts so boldly without feeling ashamed. He doesn't feel, he doesn't feel any shame, he doesn't have any sense of embarrassment. He may not have consideration for the situation or conditions of the people around him. He can empathize with others' thoughts and emotions, so they think they can communicate with him easily. He's very self-centered in its matter. And he, has, he can hardly recognize other people's feelings or thoughts. When he has to follow certain rules in a group, he can adapt himself to such a situation while others do it easily. He might lack patience, determination, or willpower, and he can accomplish everything he has to do. Of course, there might be many reasons for all these cases, but one of the main reasons is that such a person did not go through the things that one should have experienced in the growth process. Because of that, he developed a deficiency in his thinking, emotions, or ability to perform a task. In the spiritual body lectures, explain the three steps of processes that one has to go through in his growth. There are the steps of seeing, feeling, and acting. The seeing step is where just seeing with the eyes. You come in contact with the external things throughout the five senses. Next is the feeling step. In this act, you develop some kinds of feelings towards what you've seen, heard, and experienced, and put that experience and feeling into memory. In the accepting step, you utilize your thoughts and willpower to decide something or do it. You skip any of these processes or experience it in a normal way. You might have a problem later after you have grown up. 
This is called a deficiency of body. In other words, if you have not seen what you, have, what you should have seen, if you have not felt, you should have felt. And you, if you have not done what you should have done at a certain state of growth, it's a ball of deficiency because of it. Of course, it's that can't be clearly divided as though cut it with a knife. You may see, hear, and learn at the feeling step, and you can also see and feel at the acting step. The important thing is that you have to experience the things that you have to see, feel, do at each step of the grown man. In order to understand about the steps of seeing, feeling, and acting, let me give you an example of putting things in order. Those who are raised in neat environment from early childhood will naturally see and learn to put things in order. They are thought that, that they should not leave their surroundings untidily. They might be praised when they neatly put things back where they belong, so they come to have feeling that it is dirty or uncomfortable if they don't put the things in the right place, but it is tidy and convenient if they put the things in order. As they live this way, such feeling is acquired because they have such feelings. It's only natural for them to put things in order all the time. They don't think cleaning things up too tiresome. They consider it natural and something they have to do. Also, as they do it themselves, they develop the ability to keep their surroundings clean. When they clean up the closet or drawer of the desk, they learn to appropriately put the things in the place in the right place according to their uses, shapes, and colors. When you visit someone's house, for example, only by looking at a bookshelf in the house, you can know the person's character. Also, if you look at the bathroom of the house or walk into the kitchen, you will be able to find out the character of the housewives and what kind of woman she is. If you walk into the kitchen and find the place clean and organized, you may think that the housewife's character must be neat and organized. The same goes for the bathroom as well. On the contrary, they, what if they are raised in environments that are not neat and clean? They have a problem within the step of seeing. Since childhood, things are scattered everywhere, but nobody cleans them up. So they don't even know that their rooms are untidy and they have to put them in order. Also, as they do not experience the step of feeling, they don't learn to think that they don't like untidiness that, and that living in such an environment is difficult. So they continue to live in that way. They just adapt themselves to their environment. Furthermore, if somebody tells them to put the things back in the right place and keep the surroundings clean, they find it difficult to do it. They find it tiresome and take others' advice as nagging and burdensome. Even though they have gone through the steps of seeing and feeling, they must still develop a deficiency of the body if they don't go through the step of acting. Although we see and feel something, it's of no use if we don't put it into Suppose the mother always cleans the bedroom of her child. The child is raised in a clean environment, but because he has never done it himself, he does not have the ability to keep things clean. Why? While, while he was grown up, his mother did everything on his behalf. As for some children, their parents love them so much that they can even do the children's homework on their behalf. Oftentimes, fathers do that. 
they do his home, his child's homework. Then what will happen as this child grows up? He would be dependent on others, not have a sense of responsibility, not doing his homework, he can't do other things by himself as well. And he loses the chance to study on his own and improve his studies. He habitually lives things anywhere as he uses them. He just piles up the things in the drawers, on the desk, and every empty spot. He has to clean up always, yet, the, yet he doesn't, so things pile up and become messy. He wants to put all those things in order, but he doesn't know where to begin. He doesn't know where to put certain things to clean them up. But if somebody cleans up his room, he feels good about it. He might even decide that he will not let things get messed up, but keep it all orderly. But because he doesn't develop the habit of putting things where they belong, soon his bedroom is untidy again. Just an example of keeping things clean, but many deficiencies of the body are not something that is quite simple. It can become evident in various aspects of our lives and have great influence on them. It can affect us not only in everyday life, but also in spiritual matters, namely in our faith. There are some deficiencies that you can easily change, while there are things that are difficult to change and that can cause critical problems. For example, suppose when you were a child, you learned that you had to do your homework first before you could go out to play. It became a habit that you do your homework first before anything else. Even if some relatives visit you or your friends ask you to go out to play with them, you are trained to do your homework first. Such a person has self-control and a developed sense of responsibility so he can control himself after he becomes an adult. I presented doing homework as an example, but not only this, it is important that we keep promises with others and keep promises with others ourselves from an early age. Only then can we control our mind and thoughts, I means we have self-control. If we can control ourselves, almost all of us can succeed in life. If we are able to achieve what we aim to do, we can accomplish everything with self-control. Once we decide to study well, we'll think of methods of how to study well, right? We'll make a timetable. We'll plan how many hours we study, what subjects to study and how to study. And then we'll do everything as planned because we have self-control. We'll control our thoughts and even when temptations come, we'll now fall into it. We just do what we have to do. People say it is hard for a person who puts off today's work to succeed. We ought to finish today's work today and do tomorrow's work tomorrow. Yet very often people, people fail to keep promises they made with themselves, postpone today's work until tomorrow because they have deficiencies of the body. We can see such things happening quite often. They fail to do what they should to should do today. It is laziness or deficiencies of the body that prevent them from doing what they should do today. Being unable to control themselves, namely their mind and thoughts, they make errors in many things, as people are far from being successful in life. Thus, those with self-control have discipline and responsibility so they can control themselves even after they have become an adult. If he once makes up his mind, he can do the things that he has determined to do. Even if there are some unexpected situations, he sets aside time to accomplish what he has decided to do. If you can do what you have decided, you can promptly come into spirit. Coming into spirit shouldn't be hard at all. 
You make up your mind to do what you believe is right. Just do your heart's decision without changing. And nothing would be impossible to you. If you decided to set apart a certain time of the day, pray or vow to give God nightly prayers, you do it. And then you do what should be done next. To follow your plan, to love God first and be loved by Him. then what would be impossible for you to achieve. Make up your mind like, I'll not be late tomorrow, and don't be late as you resolve. If you fix one by one, you'll fix many deficiencies. But can you keep the promises even though you can't control yourself? You, who are habitually late, should practice your resolution. I'll not be late anymore. You can't stop practicing. If you are late not long after making the resolution, it is to deceive yourself. If you have not been trying to act like that and developed a deficiency in keeping your decisions, you can't really do the things that you have determined to do. If you don't keep a promise that you made with yourself, then you wouldn't keep promises with others as well. Furthermore, you don't keep promise with God. We've seen cases of such people. One of our members made up his mind to give a 20-day fasting, but didn't keep it. Although he made a promise with the Lord our God by saying, I'll do a 20-day fasting, he broke his heart's decision. If one determines to fast, he should do it, even risking his own life regardless of situation. However, if a person doesn't keep a promise he made with the Lord our God, how would he possibly keep promises with people? For example, some successful people say they have developed a method of studying. They say that in studying a foreign language, if they learn one sentence a day perfectly, they can learn 600, 600, 365 expressions a year, and this enables them to have basic conversations. Some others say if you invest just one hour a day, you can achieve a great improvement in a year. When people hear such things, many people, people feel challenged. They think we can accomplish great things with just a little bit of effort or try for one year starting from today. But they can continue their effort even just for a month, not to mention a year. They don't have the ability to make spe specific plans to carry out their decisions. They also may not be able to stick to their plans. Now, then does this deficiency affect our faith? Of course, it has a great impact. If you have failed to come into spirit or come into whole spirit, it's mostly because you have deficiencies of the body. The same can be explained for reasons why you committed sins and why you couldn't cast off sins. If you have decided to do something, you have to keep it. But if you have habitually broken your decisions, whenever you decide to do something, you end up not keeping it. For example, how many things do you plan to do while you, while you listen to the message during the service? There are members who doze off during the service. We have to worship God in spirit and in truth. There are also people who daydream and can't even remember the sermon after the service is over. This is a big deficiency of the body. We must keep the Word of God in mind and live by it during the week. But such people can't because they haven't developed a habit of worshiping God in habit, in spirit, and in truth. Some may have worshipped God 
the way from their childhood. In their case, even after 10 years of attending church, they can cultivate their heart into spirit. They just uh, let the word of God come in through one ear and out through the other. They habitually attend church, give tithes, and do the basics in Christ Christian life. If they don't plant God's word in mind and cultivate their heart and spirit through deeds, without having cultivated his heart, can a person receive God's love merely by attending a church for five or ten years? Ten years doesn't matter. Although a person has attended a church only for a year, he can receive God's love by circumcising his heart and cultivating it into spirit. The Bible says the last will be first and the first will be last. You decide to do so many things. I'll pray for at least one hour daily beginning today, tomorrow. Also read a chapter of the Bible every day. But when the next day comes, you don't do the things you wanted to do, just go to bed. You might even regret things, regret thinking, oh, I decided to pray starting today, and I should have read the Bible. But you lack the strength to carry out your plans and the strength to keep yourself from disturbances and temptations. Therefore, you should develop such abilities from an early age. If you haven't, you can be easily disturbed and can't control yourself. This is not only pertains to prayers and reading the Bible. Your spiritual growth is delayed because you can carry out your determinations in circumcising your heart. As explained, the deficiencies of the body have great efforts not only on physical aspects but also in spiritual matters. In many cases, deficiencies of the body cause you to sin and prevent you from coming into spirit. For example, you decide not to commit sins again or determine to stop doing something, but you fail. People make up their mind not to commit sins, not to commit adultery, and the works of flesh leading to death. With such determination, they pray and fast a lot, but they end up repeating such actions again with the deficiencies of body. It's because there's something wrong with their growth process. They develop the habit of making a promise and breaking it. Even after breaking a promise, they just overlook that fault. On the contrary, if you've been taught to keep a promise and never to break it, you can't break a promise. Once you make a promise, you make sure to keep it. Moreover, you will definitely keep your promise with God. How could you dare break it? If you break a promise with God, it means you have serious deficiencies of the body. As uh, this happens once, twice, and three times, you will lose God's trust. There's no trust in your relationship with God, so it's hard to receive an answer from Him. The same goes to you who do not receive healing. You reserve together of hot temper, but fail. If you don't get angry, everybody, including yourself, feels peaceful. Everybody, like your neighbor or friends or family, feel bad because you're, you get angry. Therefore, get rid of hot temper. Your life will be different. Then people think he is a good man. I want to have a fellowship with such a good man. Some people have deep-rooted deficiencies of the body. They are planted deep in their soul, spirit, joints, and marrow, and deep in their bones. Then it becomes so difficult. It is very difficult for them to root out their sins. 
You commit sins repeatedly, once, twice, and three times. It all leads to deficiencies of the body, finally. That is why the Bible tells us not to go on sinning willfully. As, as Hebrews chapter 6 and 10 tells us, if you go on sinning willfully, while, it, while knowing it is a sin, we all receive the spirit of repentance and there will be no salvation. Says if we crucify our Lord, there will be no salvation. So it tells us not to commit sin willfully. If we commit sins while knowing it is sin once, twice, and three times, sins will go deep into our body. Sins will be planted in our soul. In our mind, in our thoughts, heart, and our spirit, it will be planted in our soul, spirit, and even joints and marrow. It will be planted more deeply as we keep on committing the sins. The sinful nature deep-rooted in ourselves, it will be very difficult to uproot it. We have deep-rooted sub sub stubbornness. It is not easy to break it, right? Also, if you have deep-rooted self-righteousness in frame, it takes long for us to break them. The same goes for other things as well. Once we become addicted to smoking, it takes a long time to quit it. Suppose two people started smoking. One person has smoked only for a week, and someone says to him, you should smoke, you shouldn't smoke, you have to quit, and he decided to quit, and it will be difficult, he can quit something, as he decided, smoking, as he decided. However, another person has smoked for years, and become a chain smoker, smoking couples of packs of day, then can he quit smoking if he decides not to smoke? No, he can't quit despite his effort, because uh, smoking habit is rooted deeply. The same goes for all kinds of sins, such as drug addiction, gambling, lies, and stealing. If he commits sins willfully, knowing it is a sin, it gets deep-rooted. For example, let's say you started stealing small things from a supermarket and found it was fun, so you did it again and again and became a bigger thief. You get bold, bold enough to steal big things. Stealing has become your habit this way. Such habits and characteristics of sins are planted in you. Then it is difficult to throw them away even though you try. If it is so deep, one still thinks even when he has money. So we've heard news about people who are rich but stole from department stores. Sins and untruths are all related to deficiencies of the body because you have done what God tells you not to do and disobey. It's become deep-rooted in your body, so it is hard to root them out again. It's the same with our clothes. Small dirt on clothes can be cleansed by being washed. But if your clothes has a lot of dirt, it is not easy to remove them, right? If your clothes are very dirty, you can make it clean by washing. But we must not make it a habit to commit sins. Keeping on sinning willfully is so evil. You violate the Word of God and keep on sinning willfully is so evil. As a result, evil is planted so deeply. It is deeply planted in our body, thoughts, and heart. Suppose you are driving a nail. Small nails are easy to pull out, right? But what about big nails that are spiked deeply? Can you pull it out? You can do it with bare hands. When a person goes on sinning willfully, he is actually committing sins, though he knows that God tells us not to commit sins and more of a sins leading to death. Then this is so evil. If you heard the Lord or God saying, you will go to hell if you commit the sin, yet keep committing the sin, it means you are so evil because you keep on sinning and this happens again and again, it becomes so difficult for you to turn back. You go to the point where it's really hard to turn back and repent. If this happens to you, you can't repent. 
In other words, you are in a situation where the wall of sin between you and God has become so high as a result of this heartening God. With the wall of sin is so high, God has turned His face away from you. On top of that, even though you want to turn back, you just can't root out sins because you are rooted so deeply in your heart. That's why you can't repent. No matter how hard you struggle to repent, you can't. Although you fast, you fail to repent. That is why those who keep on sinning can't repent. When you turn back and repent, God forgives us. However, now God has turned His face away, and even the Holy Spirit has been quenched in your heart after lamenting many times. Then who could help you? You have to do it by yourself. But the problem is you can't. With the evil and sinful nature deeply rooted in you, you can't turn back by yourself. So you continue to sin, although you know you must not. You must never let this happen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, even in the world, they say it is important to teach the children what they need at each step of their growth. Many parents think their children will excel if they teach them much knowledge from a young age. But if you teach them too many things, it could be even worse than not teaching them anything. For example, the children have to see, hear, and experience various things socially or associating with their peers at certain steps of their growth. This way, they can get away from self-centeredness. They can understand the emotions and the standpoints of others and learn to communicate with others. They learn to consider all the situations and how to react to unexpected situations. They have to acquire the power to think in various ways by experiencing various things at a certain point. But suppose they remained isolated at home or associated only with others. If they don't experience the things that other children experience, it will show as problems as they grow up. They can't empathize with other children, and they will lack the ability to resolve the problems they can rise in everyday life. Then they might lose self-confidence and enthusiasm. They will feel pressured by others and become nervous. In a serious case, they might have emotional disorders, but they can't adapt to social standards. Even if they are intelligent, they might lose interest in studying and their talents will be buried. From this experience, from this example, we can understand that there are things the men have to experience during each step of their growth. At the extreme would be the so-called wolf boy or wolf girl reported by the press that clearly evidences the deficiencies of the body. A newborn baby was purportedly raised by wolves. The child then learns the things of the wolves and acts like a wolf. At some point he is rescued by people, but he can adapt to human society. He has serious deficiencies in thinking, emotions, and all his behaviors. People try to teach the things characteristic of uh, human beings, but they couldn't get out of animal-like thought and continue to act like an animal. We can understand how important it is to see, feel, do, and experience the elements that are necessary at each step of growth. I'll continue next week. I'll continue this message. Oh, oh, oh.